We wanted a stone facade for the base to our front porch, but after recovering from the sticker shock over the stone facade sold at retail stores, I decided to make it myself using exterior grade plywood. So in this video I will show you the basics of how I did just that. Alright, so here we got this front porch that I built. And as you see I already got it painted, I've got some touch up to do which I can get to later. Uh, the next step now is I'm going to put the skirting around this. And I don't want to just put in uh, you know, boards or whatever, I want it to look something unique, something different. So my idea is to install uh, something that's going to be like a faux stone look. Something to kind of match the, uh, the stone work on the house here maybe. Um, so my plan is to use uh, some plywood and some thick paint and uh, we'll see how it goes. But the first step here is to build in a framework underneath this that will hold uh, the panels in place. Okay, it's a very large area underneath this front porch here, and I want to be able to access it if I need, ever need to. So uh, this is going to be an access point. So I cut a notch out of this section of the board. So I will make a door there. Okay, so to come up with the uh, faux brick pattern, I downloaded this off a website. It's a pattern. And uh, I numbered the blocks uh, 1 through 12 so I knew what order they would be need to be uh, to get the best fit when I go to put them on the walls. Um, and then I tra traced the pattern outline with blue. And then I got out my um, this ruler here that has some sort of scale on it and I use this scale here to measure okay this one here is about 5 inches by oh about 11 okay and uh, then that would be number 10 actually and I then traced these out on the cardboard um, or drew them out on the cardboard and uh, so now this one here is uh, a little about, about ten and a quarter and about five. So that's number ten for here. It's not exact, but it kind of gave me an idea of what sizes to make and kind of get a rough outline for the stone, uh, the faux stone facing that I want to do. So now the next step is to just simply uh, put this on the plywood. This is a scrap piece of plywood I have here. So I'll start with this and uh, we'll just put it down and, and simply trace it out. And I've uh, hired some help to help me get that done too. When you pick it up, you gotta make sure that you number it, okay? Why? So that way I know which one it is. Why do you need to know which one it is? Now why yeah. didn't you just make up your own like shapes? Why did you go online and look for it? Uh, is easier, easier. Someone else already did the work, so to speak. <laughs> Once we had enough stone shapes traced onto the plywood, I cut them out in groups of three or four using a jigsaw. And then I used my bandsaw to cut them to the final shape. I picked a starting point and temporarily screwed the stone shapes onto the substrate using one or two screws just to lay out the pattern as best as I could given the available space. Then one at a time, I removed the stone, applied polyurethane glue to the backside, and screwed it back into final position. Laying out the stone shapes under the steps was a bit of a uh, discombobulation, 
So I just did the best I could and put them in a pattern that I figured would be uh, visually appealing. Bricks and stones are not usually as deep as they are wide, so notice how I cut the stone shapes to wrap the profile around the corners. Okay, the polyurethane glue uh, foams up as it dries, so I have some squeeze out here, uh, which I expected and actually wanted to help uh, better seal uh, the faux brick faces or stone faces um, to the plywood subface. Uh, so the next step right now is to uh, remove all that. At first I tried using my angle grinder to remove the glue squeeze out, but that was kind of wonky and uh, ineffective. What I found to be just as effective though is to use uh, a screwdriver and I took an old screwdriver and I bent the tip to it as you can see and now I can use that as a scraper to remove uh, the glue in between the uh, faux brick bases. The next step was to carve the stone shapes to look like, well, real stones. At least to the 15 mile power test. I tried a hammer drill with a masonry bit to see if that would add some decent, decent texture to the face, but I didn't like the results. I also tried to just distress the face with a hammer, but that just looks like hammer marks, so forget about that. So I used my angle grinder with a 36 grit sanding pad attachment, and that worked really well. Now keep in mind that um, using an angle grinder will increase your risk of personal injury depending on your experience level. And as you can see here, I'm not using the guard on my grinder, and obviously I'm not going to recommend that you use your grinder without a guard. But I'm comfortable using the grinder this way, and I accept the risks, and we'll leave it at that. More information regarding angle grinder use and personal safety is available in the description. I'm showing plenty of shaping process here in real time because if you want to use this method for your own project, then I think it's important for you to closely watch how I'm doing this. So note how I'm doing this. I'm making random digs and grooves into the face of the stone shapes to give it a rough stony appearance. I round over the edges, and after I do all that, I lightly sand over the face to smooth out the edges of the grooves and knock down the high spots. To access the inside corners, I had to remove the side handle to the grinder, and uh, this is where using gripper gloves came in really handy. Ugh, did I just say that? At any rate, uh, the gripper gloves really helped me to maintain a better grip and better control of the grinder without the handle, and with the handle too.
Okay, so there it is. Uh, all roughed out using the angle grinder with the sanding pad attachment. Made a lot of dust. What I need to do next really is to carve up these nail holes, or not nail holes, but actually screw screw heads with some exterior grade painter's caulk. I don't have to be real particular about it since I want a textured face on this anyway. need to do. Cover up those holes. To apply the paint I just used a cheap paintbrush because I knew that it would be kind of aggressive with applying the paint uh, to give it some texture. But for the paint itself I used a quality thick exterior grade paint from uh, Sherwin Williams or as my wife likes to call them, Sherman Williams. I always have to remind her that they don't sell tanks. So what I do here is I put a little extra paint on to the uh, brush and I just pop it on like this and as I do so I'm making sure not to just push it in and then drag it over as I go like this because then I'll end up with like lines in there so I go straight in straight out so I end up with just like bumps and bubbles there that uh, will dry with a textured look. So that footage was shot in October of 2015. What you are seeing here is from October of 2020. As you can see, the stone facade has held up really well and it still looks really good. Putting river rock around the porch helps to reduce the amount of mud that the rain splashes up onto the sides, but as you can see, it doesn't prevent it 100%. About once or twice a year, we hose off the mud, and every couple years, we use a brush with a mild soap to clean off the excess, just to keep it looking cleaner. And uh, landscaping with some taller plants around the porch would also help to hide any uh, mud splashed up as well, too. I hope you found this video helpful and that it gave you some ideas and inspiration for your own projects. There's more information in the description that you might find helpful, so go check that out too. I want to give a big shout out of thanks to those of you who have subscribed to my channel. I really do appreciate your subscription and it really does mean a lot to me. I don't post videos all that often, but this isn't a full-time gig for me. And even then, I try to only post videos that I think have value and not just me yapping about meaningless tripe. And, uh, okay, I'll shut up now. Except to say that I really appreciate your smashing the like button, sharing this video with others, and if you're not subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you would do that now. Okay, that's it. Hope you have a great day. God bless you. Frank, stop looking yourself.